Number 24, Integrated Concepts. The tethered satellite in figure 23.12 has a mass of 525 kilograms and is at the end of a 20 kilometer long 2.5 millimeter diameter cable with the tensile strength of steel, letter A. How much does the cable stretch if 100 newtons of force is exerted to pull the satellite in? Assume the satellite and the shuttle are at the same altitude above the Earth. So, okay. Um, so in order to kind of you know, really understand this concept, you definitely have to review chapter five in terms of elasticity. All right. Um, I'm going to, you know, that's from way, way back when. So we're going to need this particular formula though. All right. And it's going to be the formula for Young's modulus. So you got to take a look back at, like I was mentioning, chapter five, seek out some problems there. So this is the, the force applied to a, a, a rigid bar. Basically, in this case, we're going to assume that the cable is a rigid bar made out of steel. Um, it's going to be uh, equal to the change in length divided by the Young's modulus, right, for the material. It's basically like a little curvy Y thingamajig, okay? And uh, then multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that cable, all divided then by the overall length, okay? Now, we're trying to find out how much does the cable stretch, or in other words, what's the change in length of the cable? So now all we now need to do is basically move some figures around, right? And we can solve it for delta L. With a change in length and that's simply going to be now the force applied multiplied by the overall length of the wire divided then by the young's modulus uh, multiplied then by the area okay now um then the cross-sectional area that is so we basically this you got to look up the young's modulus for steel and uh yeah we now know everything basically we plug it in so the force here that's applied is going to be 100 newtons of force the overall length they told us is 20 kilometers uh, but you know we need that in meters so take the 20 and multiply by 1,000, so that's 20,000 meters, okay? Then that's all going to be divided by Young's modulus, which for steel is now 210 times 10 to the ninth. The units are newtons per meter squared, but, you know, whatever. And uh, then the cross-sectional area is going to be pi, right? Pi multiplied then by the diameter, excuse me, by the radius squared. <laughs> and they gave us the diameter, so we need that in terms of now radius, and we also need that in terms of... Um, meters, right? Not millimeters. So if this is the diameter, half of that would be the radius. In other words, 1.25 millimeters would be the radius, but you know we need that in meters. So this basically works out to be 1.25 times 10 to the minus three now, because that's the value in meters. Don't forget to square it. And that's it. All right. So now all we got to do is plug and chug. So it's 100 multiplied by 20,000, then divided by parenthesis now, 210 times 10 to the ninth times then pi times then 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. Close those parentheses, and there you go. So now the change in length here of this particular rod is going to be about 1.94 meters. 1.94 <clears throat> meters. Okay, put the answer up at the top. That's that. All right, so now let's take a look now at uh, letter uh, B. All right. So letter B, actually, you know what? Let's just delete this picture because quite honestly, we don't need it. So this is A. This is now going to be B. So ba, 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 ba. there it is. Letter, uh, what is the effective force constant on the cable? All right, this is a review of forces, right? And uh, basically, it should be in chapter five. All right, so the uh, force, overall force that's applied will equal this force constant K multiplied by the change in length or change in X. All right, the length of that particular rod. Since I'm using L, I'm just going to leave it as an L. So to solve this thing for K, it's fairly straightforward. It's going to be the force applied divided by then that change in length. So the force constant here is going to be 100 newtons divided then by the 1.94. And the force constant now becomes 1, 100 uh, divided by that answer that we got before. I'm going to divide by the exact answer. So that's about 51.5. Okay, 51.5. And this is now newtons per meter. All right. Similar to the Young's modulus, which was newtons per meter squared, but not exactly. So that's letter B. And now letter C, how much energy is stored in it when it is stretched 100 newtons? You know, there's some potential energy, right? Whenever you stretch, think about a rubber band. When you stretch a rubber band, there's some potential energy, right, that you have now added to the system there. Because once you let go, ouch, does that hurt, right? So that's the release of energy. Ah, doesn't it feel good to release energy? So um, what we now need to do is... Use the potential energy formula here, all right? So we're thinking about, well, what is it, right? How does it relate to this, this stretchiness of the spring? 
all right, or of a material. You can think about it like a spring also. So uh, this is one half times the force constant multiplied then by the change in length or change in x, but I'm calling it L squared. So this is fairly straightforward. Now all we got to do, and all these formulas, by the way, you got to review those chapters. Okay, they're all back there. They're all back there. Feels like ages ago, right? So the force constant here we just found is 51.5. The change in length was 1.94. You got to square it. And now this will be the potential energy stored in that particular system. So it's 0.5 multiplied by 51.5. I'm using the exact answer multiplied then by that change in length. Squared, I'm using all exact answers here. So this is about 97, okay? 97.0 joules of energy. And that's it. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope this helps. And like I said, check out some of those problems from way back when for a refresher. And I will see you soon. Take care.